Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now 2022 wasn't a great time to buy a graphics card. Stock was scarce, prices were high, and those looking for something new had been waiting a while for, well, something, anything. Anything eventually appeared in the form of the 4GB Radeon RX 6500 XT. Now it wasn't just VRAM that held this card back, it also has a 64-bit bus width as well as 4 PCIe lanes. This is a Gen 4 card and running it in an older Gen 3 system for example can and will make gaming performance worse. I don't think it's too bold of an assumption to suggest that a lot of gamers who were shopping for what was, on paper anyway, a sub $200 or pounds graphics card at the time may have had an older Gen 3 PC and would therefore be leaving some performance on the table. Despite the 6500 XT's shortcomings, I've always wondered if an 8GB version would have been any better. Oh would you look at that, I have finally found one. I've been looking for one of these for years. The 6500 XT launched with 4 gigs of VRAM only, but I had heard that one or two vendors had started selling 8 gig models. This one is from HP and was hiding behind a different name, a Radeon NV24 Kicker 8 gig. NV24 presumably stands for Navi24, the name of the GPU itself. I don't know what specific system this card was pulled from, but I found it on eBay for £142. Regular 4 gig 6500 XTs can be found for less than 100 and the next card up, performance wise, the 6600, can be found for between £10 and £20 more. But what else has changed with this? Well, this 8 gig 6500 XT has an 8 pin power connector instead of 6, though it seems to only use like 3 watts more. It peaked at about 83 watts today instead of 80. Apart from that, it's the same 64 bit card with 4 PCIe lanes, 1024 cores, 2 display outputs and a lack of hardware encoding. That means no internal game recording with AMD Relive software for example. But how does it perform? First, let's see it in action on its own. After this initial set of gameplay benchmarks, I'll throw up some comparisons to the standard 4GB card, as well as the RX 6600, another 8GB GPU that is basically the next best card in the 6000 series. So first of all we have Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p with a high preset and 4x MSAA. This produced 140 frames per second, a 1% low of 107 and a 0.1% low of 85. Overall performance was consistent, no matter the game mode or the map that we played on and so far so good but this is a relatively easy to run title of course so let's switch it up a bit. This is GTA 5 Enhanced, at 1080p with the high preset and FSR 3 set to native resolution, we were seeing 72 frames per second. Again, the percentile lows were very consistent, meaning that gameplay overall was smooth and I rarely experienced any dips or drops when running around town or blowing things up as I normally do. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 at 1080p is best played with the low preset and SMAA 2TX instead of FSR. Here we saw a very nice average frame rate of 69, again with decent percentile lows that represent smooth and consistent gameplay. 54 and 51 were those numbers. When it comes to Battlefield 6, I had presumed that this one would struggle, but with the lowest settings and TAA, we were able to hit at least 60 frames per second overall. 64 was the average, the 1% low was 53, and the 0.1% low was 49. Cyberpunk 2077 with the low preset, medium crowds and high textures with FSR 3.0 quality gave us 83 frames per second. I enabled FSR 3 here because there were still some dips and drops below 60, but they were far less frequent with upscaling switched on. Red Dead Redemption 2 has the ultra textures enabled with everything else set to medium along with TAA for a nice average of 77 FPS. This one has a few issues in and around Valentine but I have implemented a couple of registry tweaks beforehand when using an AMD card that have improved things and I hadn't done that here but this is something I would implement when actually playing for long periods of time as it can feel a bit laggy but overall it wasn't too bad at all. 
Finally, we have our upgraders. 1080p with the medium preset and TAAU gave us 80 FPS, again with solid percentile lows of 68 and 62 respectively. The game looks decent on these settings and all the textures actually loaded. I've been playing this one mostly on older cards with less VRAM and we have some trouble with textures loading in or not loading in at all. Sometimes they'd load in and then just disappear again, but none of that here. By this point though, the HP 8GB 6500XT was getting pretty noisy. Now it's not running particularly hot and that's easily explained when you consider the fan noise itself. Yeah, it doesn't stop under low load either, so the fan is always spinning, but when you're not doing anything, you can't hear it at all. It's only when gaming that it decides to ramp up to sort of jet engine noise levels. But hey, it doesn't run too warm, so I can't complain too much. Now then, let's move on and see how the 8GB 6500 XT compares to the standard 4GB model as well as the RX 6600, another 8GB GPU that is also available for less than £200 here in the UK. You're looking at around £150 at least from the listings that I've seen on eBay over the past week. I've run through a handful of the previous tested games, only this time I've turned the settings up a bit in a lot of them to see how the cards handle themselves when we start to use a lot more VRAM. Counter Strike 2, well this was a pretty easy one for all of the cards, I don't think the high preset was enough to really make the standard 4GB struggle and as such the 4GB 6500XT and 8GB versions performed pretty much the same in terms of an average and the percentile lows. The RX 6600 pulled ahead with uh, 242 frames per second compared to 163 and 162 that we saw from the 6500s. For GTA 5 Enhanced I went with the very high RT preset this time around and TAA. Now the RX 6600 can handle this with over 60 frames per second, 62 was the average. When we look at the 6500 XTs, well the 4GB card, yeah, uh, you can pretty much see what was going on here. We ran out of VRAM and the game became unplayable almost instantaneously. The moment we left Michael's house we started seeing freezes all over the place resulting in an average of 10 and a 1.1% low of just 1 FPS, 0.9 to be exact. With the 8GB 6500 XT, a card that I would still avoid ray tracing with where possible, uh, we saw 38 FPS on average, a 1% low of 30 and a 0.1% low of 30 as well, so can't ask for much more in terms of consistency and it actually felt okay to play. I was actually quite surprised by the improvement here. In Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, we once again saw the best result from the RX 6600, no surprises there, 67 FPS overall with consistent percentile lows. The 6500 XT 8 gig hit 42 FPS with a 1% low of 36 and a 0.1% low of 35. And when it comes to the 4 gig 6500 XT, we saw a drop to 34 FPS, a 1% low of 25 and a 0.1% low of 13. So the average was lower. And again, the gameplay was less consistent with more dips and drops, particularly around this busy opening town. And when we started moving towards the woodland, things got even worse. Here we have Battlefield 6 again, this time I turned the settings up to medium, the RX 6600 put out a pretty decent result, 94fps, a 1% low of a very nice 69 and a 0.1% low of 48. The 8GB 6500 XT managed to come quite close to 60fps, 58 was the overall average, again the percentile lows were decent, 48 and 44, so pretty smooth. The 4GB 6500 XT hit just 34 frames per second, so still playable to those of you who are okay with 30fps. Uh, the 1% low was 27 and the 0.1% low was 21, so the problem I have here is that it wasn't a particularly smooth experience, so you could still cap the game to 30fps, but those dips and drops are going to be noticeable. 
Finally then, for the comparative results, we have Cyberpunk 2077 turned up to the high preset. Now the RX 6600 can handle at least 60 FPS. We're looking at 66 here with a 1% low of 46 and a 0.1% low of 43. The 8GB 6500 XT hit 43 FPS as an average. Uh, the 1% low was 29 and the 0.1% low was 27, whereas the standard 4GB 6500 XT hit 28 FPS with a 1% low of 16 and a 0.1% low of 11. So wouldn't recommend these settings for the standard 4 gig card, the version of the card that's going to be most widely available. Now despite no other changes with the elusive 8 gig variant, performance is much improved with double the VRAM. Games are more stable and perform more consistently, especially with higher settings. Now the 8 gig 6500 XT still falls short of the 6600 non XT by some way. So if you do come across an 8 gig 6500 XT and it's only slightly cheaper than a 6600 like it was here for me, uh, it's worth spending the extra if you can do so. If you live somewhere that has both 4 and 8 GB 6500 XTs in stock at similar money and both are way cheaper than a 6600, then the 8 GB card is without doubt the better choice. If you are interested in the standard 4 GB 6500 XT, the most widely available card, then I'd be sure to check out the prices of second hand RX 570s, 580s, and GTX 1650 Supers, especially if you have an older Gen 3 PC. Now I haven't tested Gen 3 today, all of the tests were carried out in a Gen 4 system with an i5-12400F and even without a top tier processor the differences between the 4 and 8 gig versions of the 6500 XT were very noticeable. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you have one of these cards? Have you ever used one? And if so, are you happy with it? I'm certainly happy with the improvement that this version brings and it'll be interesting to see how it compares to the 4 gig card in some of the latest and upcoming releases. Thanks as always for watching, if you enjoyed it leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you want to of course, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one. I actually managed to make it through that, I've been losing my voice today, got a bad cold but I got through it. <laughs> or maybe not. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.